Um, good evening to all the studious uh, beer craft lovers out there in the uh, universe of... Okay, whatever. All right. Hi, everybody. This is... Mm, I almost said May. I am getting confused here. We are in the month of December, day after Christmas, the 26th, 2018. Very special review. Again, we're doing some more Wild Car Wednesday, but this is the last review of 2018 till we get to that new year next year on... January, I believe, 2nd, and we're going to look at Christmas ales then. And we're going to do Christmas in review on that day. But until then, we are live now with John Anile from the great state of Georgia. Hello, John. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. We got uh, Michael Komaroff, uh, Brooklyn, New York, um, supporter of all things craft beer that's, that's – uh, uh, positive in youtube land so hello oh, it's great to be on with you guys yeah jay is jay carry out apparently he may make an appearance with with his bearded friend david if you ever watch jay terry channel he and david sometimes review beers together and they got a lot of stuff to say so i'm gonna pull up the chat and while we're pulling up the chat i want to hear from john in la and then from michael cormor up what wild card uh, beers that they brought to the table. So let's start with John and Neely. All right. I have got a beer out of Mississippi from the Lazy Magnolia Brewing Company, Mississippi's oldest brewery. It is their Southern Pecan. It is a brown ale brewed with roasted pecans. It is 4.5% alcohol and 16 IBUs. It is brewed and bottled in Kiln, Mississippi. Excellent. That sounds good. Um, Michael Komaroff, what are you? I bringing? have Half Acre Dungeons from Chicago, and it's a 7% IPA with Mosaic, Waimea, and Simcoe hops. That sounds I don't know the IBUs. I did do some research, couldn't find out how many IBUs, but I kind of have a feeling it's not going to be hot. Cool. So today I'm bringing, and I found out, John, this is available, it says on the website, from between August or between October and December. So sort of a winter-themed beer, I guess. Um, this is the Lagunitas Brown Sugar. I'm sure all of you craft beer guys out and girls out there in YouTube land have had this one before it's a 10 percent alcohol by volume beer i believe it's typically considered on places like beer advocate and rate beer like a um what do they call it like an american strong ale which could be anything of high abv if you ask me if you ever read uh, bjcp uh, interpretation on that style so it's basically like a barley wine so john you said because you're a huge lagunitas fan you said that this is a take on their barley wine known as gnarly wine correct Actually, it's the um, they have another beer called Lagunitas Stucks. So Brown Sugar, when it was released, uh, after they produced it for a while, they ran out of the ingredients that they used to make the beer. So they came up with this other version of it called Lagunitas Stucks, which I believe that one is available year-round. I could be wrong. But that one is very similar in alcohol, hops, and you know the way that it's brewed as the Brown Sugar. And I've had both of them, and I think they're both excellent. I couldn't really tell too much of a difference, but I think you're really going to like the beer, Eric. Excellent. I haven't had it in in a little bit of time, so it'll feel like a refresher for my palate on that. I also have, and I did a review of the Duncan Porter Coffee Porter yesterday with this product, but since we're here live now, I got this product for Christmas. It's called the, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, you probably can't. It looks a little blurry right now, but it's called the throttle opener. Now it looks like it's got a thumb switch of, you know, of your, in your NASCAR, uh, uh, gentlemen start your engines and they flip the switch and then it starts up the engine or like on a uh, uh, F-18 or whatever those fire jets are called. So you're supposed, so it's got a little magnet on it. So you put it right on the top of the, uh, of the bottle top and then it's got the crowbar looking part where it pries the bottle cap off. It's supposed to be able to be used the ideas by one hand so let me see if i can even do that here live and uh 
yeah, there you go. And it's magnetized, so it keeps the bottle cap from uh, flying all over the place. But little uh, product review there. It's like $17.99 on Amazon. I think that's way too much money for a little gadget, but it's it's cool. It's made out of stainless steel. Anyway. Should be made out of silver or gold for that price. <laughs> exactly. I think they have a copperized version. I think there is one made out of copper. But I digress on that. Uh, yeah, interesting product if you want to show off. So, anyways, without further ado, if uh, anybody on the panel here has got a beer poured and they want to start reviewing it, uh, you may begin. Which one? Who's got a beer in the glass? I've got mine poured here. Excellent. Um, it poured good. with about a finger of a tan head, which dissipates pretty quickly. Um, it's a nice brown appearance. Very well. Uh, let's see. There you go. Nice brown appearance. You can see through it. No sediment floating around. Some nice streaming bubbles going up the glass. All right. So on the aroma, you're getting some nice roasted barley malt. Nice bready, like a toasted bread note. I'm not picking up on any of the 16 IBUs. It's very malt forward. Very light on the aroma, 4.5% alcohol, 16 IBUs. This is a very light, sessionable brown ale. I'm not picking up on any of the roasted pecans on the aroma, but it smells like a traditional brown ale, you know, along the lines of like a Newcastle, something like that. Um, all right. Well, cheers, guys. Cheers. Mmm. Very nice. You're getting some nice, um, you know, that roasted barley malt hits you right up front. A nice toasted bread note in the middle of the sip. There is a little bit of a nuttiness with this one, kind of like you get with the Newcastle as well. Although, if you didn't, if they didn't disclose that it had roasted pecans in there, I wouldn't guess pecans. I would just say that it has that typical brown ale nuttiness that you get from the roasted barley malt. Um, it's medium on the carbonation. The body is super light with this one. You get a lot of nice flavors, you know, that you would expect from a brown ale, but the body is light. The beer is sessionable. The finish is crisp, clean, very refreshing, um, relatively dry as well. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. This is a good light beer to have when you've got uh, things to do like I do when I get off here. I got to finish unpacking all my stuff from, um, you know, when I was at my parents for Christmas. So this would be a good one to do. It's not going to knock you on your ass or anything like that. So my first thoughts are that it's very enjoyable and it reminds me a lot of Newcastle. It's kind of in that, in that realm, a very light, sessionable brown ale. So I like it. Hey. Greetings, James. Greetings. What is up? Hello, Mr. James P. Madonna. Uh, 5.6 5 alcohol by volume. This is, uh, it says, um, I got here, uh, uh, Copernic, Copernic, Ooh. Copernic beer. It says, uh, um, special edition in celebration of the 540th, uh, birthday of, uh, Nicholas Copernicus, who was uh, the astronomer, I, I assume it says here, uh, Amber. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, imported by Amtec International, Brooklyn, New York. I'm not sure. Um, okay, it's from Poland. Another one, right? <laughs> Another Poland. Polish beer. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have I have something. I have a, another beer that I got from somewhere else, but I, I like the uh, the label. Wow, they're both interesting, and I'm not sure. There you go what exactly if this is a log or not because it, they, they don't tell you it only looks like one <laughs> the bastards because i'm up yeah i don't know Whoa, a lot of bubbles it looks like yeah you're right how's that beer going down how's that taste how's that smell what you getting it's good it's uh i, I can taste um, the uh, bitterness of the hops it's uh i call it a light if it is a lager, I call it a light lager. Uh, I mean, um, you know, it's a mystery when you try something brand new. 
for Wild Card Wednesday. Well, look at those bubbles. Yeah, John was right. <laughs> Jeez, let me see if there's any other more info here, but I don't think there is. Um, no. Nah. Uh, Brower Amber. I, I, I don't think we don't have uh, uh, Mr. Tyrio here to go into the history of this, but um, yeah, it, it's imported from Poland. Um, I'm trying to see what it's classified as, but it really doesn't say. It says 1473. All right, so it's it, it's it's a it's a it says limited edition in honor of uh, Nicholas Copernicus, the uh, the astronomer. So, uh, and it says really the great astronomer. Um, you know, besides Kilbasa, I guess Copernicus is the only, uh, you know, and pierogies are the only Polish contribution to the world. But uh, oh. I know I'm going to get heat for that. But, <laughs> I'm going to get heat for that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's uh, like John says, it's very effervescent, and I would call it a light lager, but not a bad one, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, but it's definitely. I've had worse, definitely full body than, um, um, uh, let's put it this way. It's, it's better than, it's definitely better than a Corona. Not, not as good as a Modelo Especial or, or a Dos Equis Ambar, but it's good. Okay. It's not bad. You know, I Jay is watching us live. Hello, Jay, and Craig Swenson is here. Uh, Craig is drinking Lining Kugel's original right now, and John H. Pierre let me know that he wanted to join, but he ended up at a mall. I like I like Jay's oh, uh, bonfire. On, Jay's bonfire uh, photos uh, look very nice. Yeah, oh yeah. So uh, sounds like an interesting beer. Yeah, cool. We'll uh, definitely come back to everybody. Uh, you know, once reviews are have taken place to hear final thoughts and grades on said beers. But I do want to hear now, we got, um, that was James C. Madonna from the great state of New Jersey. Uh, yeah, I don't know great, but I'm from. But it's a state of, it's the state of New Jersey. State of insanity. Sure. <coughs> I'll have live in one of those states. Uh, now we got uh, Michael Komarov from Brooklyn, New York to just. Right. James, um, I'll show this again. I have a can of Half Acre Dungeons. Ooh. Seven percent IPA with mosaic, Wymia, and Simcoe hops. So I expect it to be um tasty, but I'll give it a taste. Oh, Here's yeah. what it looks like. Oh. It's a little on the hazy side. Let me get like that, wheat, like that wheat beer I, I showed last it's week. It's going to be different than that, I think. Yeah. Um, you're getting a lot of the hops um, as far as the as the nose goes, and um, it's 7% alcohol. Let me give it a taste. Very nice. Wine. I'm getting... Hints of um, tangerine and strawberries. So it's kind of like um, a, a fruity beer. Let me take another sip. That's an interesting note, Michael. Strawberries. I wonder if that's coming from the hops they're using. I, I would assume it is. Um, as far as the bitterness goes, there isn't any. Really? Now, I'm not saying it's zero. It, it probably could be 20 or 30, but compared to some of the more heavy IPAs, it seems like the bitterness is very low. Goes down very easy for a seven percenter. It's really showcasing more of like a, but kind of citrusy fruit notes you can get out of, out of, uh, out of hops than just pure bitterness. Yes, and it's interesting that it's doing a good job of the combination between the um, tangerine, which is citrus, and the strawberry, which is a berry. Together, they complement each other really well. So they did a really nice job on this. And and I could be wrong about the IBUs. I'm just not getting you know heavy bitterness. It's it's very low bitterness, and um, 
I'm happy with it, but you can come back and I'll give you a number the next time through. Final thoughts. Back with Michael Komarov in a little bit. Um, I don't know if you're pronouncing that hot variety correctly. I will spell it for you. W-A-I-M-E-A. -E oh, well, some crazy YouTube website called it Wymea, so I think you're right on how to pronounce it. It seems like that's some kind of a Hawaiian terminology, some kind of Hawaiian name and theme, I guess. It's a uh, Wymea. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's a I've never heard of that hop until today. The other two, the Simcoe and the um, Mosaic, I've had multiple times. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up later, but but from what I remember here, just within the last few seconds of looking up the Wymea hop, they, they seem to, maybe it works good in this beer, how you describe it is exactly what they're trying to do with it. Supposedly, it's supposed to be a jack of all trades kind of a hop that it can blend well, lend itself well to almost any other hop varieties. And it's probably grown in a higher elevation in Hawaii because isn't hops a temperate I, uh, crop? Some of the inform yeah, you're you're right about that. Some of the information that I had seen w w was calling it a, a another one of those New Zealand hop varieties. So mm. I'll look into that, and that just sounds kind of interesting. New hops are popping up all over the place all the time. So for me, I am drinking today, once again, I have said this, I am drinking the Lagonitas Brown Sugar, 10% uh -huh. uh, American Strong Ale, Barley Wine, whatever you want to call it, one of those two kind of styles. It is 51.1 IBUs, 10%, and this was originally a failed attempt at the Lagunitas 1997 batch of old gnarly wine ale resulting in a new beer style we like to call irresponsible all right so this comes out between october and december pretty much every year i have it in i don't know what you call this one of those little schooner kind of brewery style glasses it doesn't have much of a head in this style glass but maybe in more of a narrow rimmed glass it would have some more head there's definitely orangey like coppery dark dark orangey kind of notes to it in my glass there's a little bit of red on camera they bone well, not bone white i guess it's kind of a tan head and there are there is tons of unfiltered sediment and particles floating around in this beer so let's uh try to pull out a nose on the brown sugar from lagunitas and brown sugar is definitely correct on the nose however it's not Super, super, super cloyingly sweet. Doesn't smell overly sweet. But definitely brown sugar, uh, brown sugar, and as we say in Massachusetts, and some uh, light molasses-y kind of notes to it. There's definitely a toasty crack, uh, toasty bready, brown bready malt to it in the background. Definitely some tangerines or oranges or sometimes I find that beers can kind of have almost like a marmalade kind of a fruit jammy kind of a smell to it and it actually has clean water scent to it if that makes any sense so i'm gonna dive right into that a little bit of dark fruits um not heavy on the booze so yeah i'm starting to spill this damn beer it's all full cheers wow yeah much much larger on the palate than the nose for sure lots of dark fruit <coughs> like, um dark cherries plums raisins figs oh, wow lots of sweetness there there is a stickiness in there there is some hop bittering in here it's 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 sort of a hoppier take on the um american strong ale or the barley wine kind of a territory of a beer <sighs> some phenolic notes of the alcohol you can tell it's a it's a 10 percent bigger beer it doesn't get carried away it doesn't burn in the mouth and it doesn't burn going down but it definitely has a phenolic kind of a alcoholic note if you know what i mean if you've had bigger stronger barley wines or bigger stronger beers 10, 11, 12, 13 plus percent. You kind of get those notes out of it. I would say semi-dry. Not 
the driest beer, obviously, this style I would never figure is going to be very dry. But there is almost a refreshing, refreshing kind of a quality I'm getting out of it. It sort of is a, I would say it is a, a, a medium towards the full bodied. If you called it full, yeah, sure. I would agree with you on that. But it finishes a little bit on the thinner side, so it keeps somehow the um, drinkability really high in this one. This is a dangerous beer. This is not. This doesn't taste harsh, and there's it doesn't taste like at ten percent. It's uh, sure to drink it. So um, it's got some nice lacing on it. I think if you really never had barley wines or anything American style barley wines, more on the hoppier side, sort of earthy bitterness in there. I don't think if you've ever had barley wines before or American strong ales, as maybe this one's called, if you've never had those styles before, this might actually be a really good one to try because it's really unoffensive and it doesn't um, burn the throat or have really, really hot alcohol notes to it. So pretty good so far, and it will probably get better as it warms and probably will do great aging. Um yeah, so I'm doing good with the brown sugar. I'm kind of curious if we went back to James C. Madonna, how he's doing on his uh, Polish lager over there in New Jersey. Well, um, it's uh, I yeah, I got to be fair. I'll give it an eighty percent out of a hundred. I'll give I'll give it a, uh, a B a B minus. Uh, it, it it's not bad it's not bad i mean uh if somebody offered it to me and i was thirsty enough i would say it's great but uh you know you can't you can't beat the porters and stouts and um what you what you just said uh, yeah eric you know and, and all and a lot of the, the the beers that the other two gentlemen uh, present you know, with the higher uh, alcohol volume and uh, all the, the pleasant additives, you know, the darker, uh, the darker uh, uh, products, you know, but it, I, I'll give it an 80. Nothing uh, earth shattering or uh, mind altering in uh, wow factor. Country. No, it, it's a, it's it's it's, uh, it's a beer, right? A little above, it's a little above average in uh, as far as uh, quality uh, uh, light lagers. I would say go. You know, I mean, I would definitely drink it over any nationally advertised American uh, beer. Let's put it that way. Okay, we heard it live from uh, James C. Madonna. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go back to the United States with uh, John and Nilly's uh, very interesting uh, Sonic beer he's drinking. That piece. All right, so the lazy, yeah, <clears throat> lazy Magnolia Son of a Cop. Okay, so very easy to drink, um, very sexual. I mean, I'm almost done with mine. Wow, it's got a you know a typical brown ale taste to it. It's really enjoyable. I wish it had more of that roasted pecan note um, because it is brewed with roasted pecans. I would like that to be a little bit more prevalent. Um, so a little more nuttiness would have really set this one apart. Uh, the session ability, like I said, is through the roof. This is a great beer to drink. Um, if you want something other than your typical adjunct lager, or something with more flavor, more depth of character and, um, it, you know, it's, it's not quite an A for me. Um, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go with an 87 out of 100. It's getting up there towards an A, but it doesn't quite make it there for me. Um, the body is is super light. Like I said, it's it'd be great to just session all day if you want something with a little more flavor. Um, I think Newcastle is a little bit better than this because it has more of those nutty flavors that you would expect from a brown ale. But this one is really enjoyable, malt forward. Um, it's got a little bit of a hot pot on the finish to balance it out. But, um, you know, I've had better. 
So for that reason, it gets an 87 out of 100 from me. Did you say what that was Lazy Magnolia pro uh, product? Yeah, here we go. Uh, it's Lazy Magnolia Brewery, uh, brewery out of Mississippi. Mississippi. It's Mississippi's oldest brewery. Huh. And they skimmed it. It's like they skimmed on the pecans. In other words, it's it's, it's very very. It's a little mild, right? With the name Southern Pecan, I would kind of expect the roasted pecan nutty qualities to be prevalent, and they're really not there. Uh, if you didn't tell me it had pecans in it, I would just think it was a traditional brown ale. It doesn't have anything to really set it apart from other brown ales that I've had. So that's why it doesn't get an A because it's not uh, not as advertised for me. Yeah, it should be should yeah. definitely be but it's good it's good and i would recommend it and the price is right it's pretty cheap um i think i got a six pack of it for seven dollars which for a craft beer is is not too bad not at all there's not many pecan uh, craft beers out there right besides lazy magnolia we got one here in the massachusetts oh. area that comes out every year i guess it's around thanksgiving time it's a porter. It's called Genghis Pecan. Porter. Oh, Genghis Pecan. There you go. <laughs> it's like octopus beer. It's a, it's a clever name. Uh, yeah. What if this acorn beer? But anyway, that that, is, that might not have a good flavor. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I sure get a chuckle at a good pun, especially if I'm making a bad one and everybody at work uh goes, oh yeah, there he goes making another pun again. But it almost seems gimmicky. <laughs> Yeah, it, number one, if you try to make a beer with one of those names, I get it. That's pretty funny. It's going to get people to pick up the label. But I guess as an examiner, if you're going, okay, okay, a little uh, pecan beer there. It better taste like fucking pecans. And if it doesn't, well, I just wasted my money. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you've got a lot to live up to when, 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 for, when, when, when it comes to craft beer, I, I know that John's uh, beer did not cost a whole bunch for a six pack. But when you when you start putting out these crazy, obscure, weird names on your beer and you're charging whatever the price is, it really better live up to that name. Otherwise, people are going to feel like they just got ripped off. The people that aren't really like really huge, super enthusiasts of craft beer. Yeah. Well, Mississippi, being that Mississippi is uh, such a, a poor state, they should really add go heavy on the pecans <laughs> so they can make more you know, get more happy consumers and uh, maybe, you know, uh, get a little, maybe, a little, uh, raise their economy, their pathetic economy. <laughs> but I, di I digress on that one. That was a little tangent there from your old boy, Thomas Mount 75. But I do think that um, Michael Kormoff is ready to give his beer a fair review and rating. I'm going to give my beer is an A beer. I'm giving it a 93. Woo. <coughs> I, Eric, with your further research, I think, if I'm not mistaken from memory, the Waimea hop may be a South African hop. Ooh. But further checking must make sure and validate that. Yes, yeah, so let's validate, shall we? My guess, too, Michael, would be that the strawberry flavor is coming from that hop because the other two hops I'm very familiar with and I've never picked up on strawberry with that. With the I think the Simcoe, Simcoe is, the Simcoe is a straight citrus hop. And the right. um, what's it called? The mosaic is mosaic. more of a tropical hop. Uh, right. I may uh, hop according to the uh, Brewers Supply Group Inc. Uh, BSGCraftBrewing.com says that this is a trademarked hop. The Waimea is a dual hop, is a dual purpose hop bred and released, hop breed and was released in 2012, known for uh, vigorous growth. The Waimea claims um, parentage, <coughs> or I guess lineage, right? From from uh, Californian Lake Cluster, Fuggle, and Saz. And this is apparently a New Zealand. New Zealand, okay, so it's not South Africa, it's New so, Zealand. Yeah, they basically say in a nutshell, without going into too much detail, their commercial description is Waimea is a natural fit for any beer where a powerful whatever that means, right? Where a powerful hop character is desired. Okay. Did that beer feel like it had a powerful hop character? Because it seemed like it blended with the other hops in, in more of a um, in more of a harmony rather than sort of showing its true strength. Um, I taste the citrus from the Simcoe and I guess I probably taste the strawberry 
either from the mosaic or the different combination of the other two. I'm not sure how I'm getting it, but the bitterness is low and it it, it is well balanced and yeah. I really like it. They say, again, again, just to go back to the Waimea really quickly, they say it should have um, think tangerine and orange and pine needles for days. Well, I'm not getting pine needles, but I understand the citrus side of it for sure I'm getting. And I'm getting this berry component as well. It almost sounds like a mosaic when you say berry. Oh, I think you I think you would like this beer. I'm not sure John would, although you do like some citrus forward beers. I'm not sure you'd like this. I'm getting you know, I, I've been getting into the IPAs a little bit more. I prefer the citrus over the piney, so I, I would probably like it to an extent. But I'm not getting the pine needles in it. Maybe um, somebody else would. Since everybody's palate is so different, I guess it varies on any beer you taste. David Singleton, live in the house. He says, a Nelly, L-O-L, A uh, space N-E-L-L-Y, L-O-L. What's up, bro? I made him. What's up, Thomas? I made you a uh, moderator so you can kick off people that are talking bad. But there's only three people here, so we're all good. Um so yeah david um craig swenson is here he says i look forward to wednesday nights it's the only time of the week i get to experience jp madonna's ding dong <laughs> whoa well I, I i kept my ding dong uh, uh uh to a minimum because every time i ding dong it looked like poor jay was upset he was making faces at me Oh, forget that guy. We're all having a good. Now, who is this gentleman? Hey, you want a ding dong? I got the world's largest, most obnoxious jingle bell. <laughs> oh, okay. Jingle balls. Jingle right. all the way. Balls. And then I got the old fashioned jingle balls for Festivus. <laughs> Festivus for the rest of us. All right. So we got ding dong for the week. All right. All right. Are, you, are you ready with your final? review of brown sugar excuse me brown sugar's got a really nice combination like a video it's really uh, it, to be completely honest <coughs> it is a hot uh, this is a medium towards full-bodied beer but it actually it's kind of surprising at 10 percent for me because it really does have a have a nice sort of a soft mouthfeel if that makes any sense so go figure that yeah, it really does. And, and and warmer, a little bit more towards room temperature now. I'm getting less, not that it was huge, but it was noticeable. I'm getting less 10% booziness right now. I'm getting more sweet, bready um, malts and dark sort of turned marmalade-y, mold, cidery, fruity kind of notes, which is now reminding me of a barley wine straight up. So this is pretty good. Marmalade-y. Thing. um they're giving it a 4.3 out of 5 on beer advocate and that's what i've looked up thus far that i can recall um um this definitely has to be higher than a 90 so 90 i have no clue um let's go with a 92 out of 100 write it down i got it good uh, yeah, yeah. I'm in this one I mean, just for me personally, if I'm drinking a barley wine or an American strong ale, maybe not necessarily in ABV, but you'll find higher ABVs than this. I guess I like a more robust, bigger, chewier mouthfeel and more of a like uh, just take your time and sip the beer, which you should with this one. It does kind of have that quality to a certain extent. Actually, it's a really sticky body, um, but it's not quite as complex or chewy or viscous in the mouthfeel like some people would really want out of their barley wines some imperial stouts kick the shit out of this when it comes to mouthfeel and body but apples and oranges fruit pun aside um yeah it's, it's different beasts so it, again i say it this way if you've never really had barley wines or american strong ales or even really higher abv beers like this very cheap Lagunitas. I forget two dollars and change for a single Lagunitas is goddamn like one of the best beer values in the whole planet Earth, if you ask me. Really great, well-made beers. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money. You're getting tons and tons of flavors. I mean, look at that lacing; it is just stuck on there at the top of the glass. Milky Way Galaxy. Yeah. yeah so, Eric, Eric, I have a question. This, uh, real quick, 
uh, the, uh, the the CEO of um, Sam Adams. He does this commercial about Boston Lager and claims that the hops used are coming from a small patch of land in Germany. In how, could a small, how could a small farm, a small patch of land, yeah. provide enough hops to produce all of the Boston Lager for Sam Adams? I hold that comment in question to Michael Cormoro. I, I have no idea, but I don't understand how the Sam Adams business model works or anything related to it. I know they're a big brewer, and I'm sure they make a lot of Boston lager, so I cannot answer that question. Yeah, so a small not, catch. And, do, and, not, and, do not know. Sounds like and, hype to me. And that Bavarian uh, wheat ale... I, I had a strong honey aroma and flavor. Texas Connor, that was it. But it was, uh, it, 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 the ingredients were very simple. There was no uh, added exotic uh, um, flavors of any kind added to it. It was just, uh, you know, hot fries with a beer like a Francis Connor and traditional German wheat beers and even some of the Belgian kind of uh, uh, yeasty forward beers. How much just just what I just said? How much yeast is, is really able to play into flavors? You'll get anything from banana. Some people say bubblegum flavors in these okay. uh, wheat beers, and you'll get that honey-like sweetness from a combination of probably of yeast and probably some of the mm. some of the wheat malt that they're using in that beer. How it all kind of comes together. It's really the perfect. If not the, if not one of the most perfect beer styles, when you're really thirsty and it's like 100 degrees outside, uh, it's no mistaking why uh, Hefeweizens and Belgian style wit beers like Blue Moon have become style like Blue Moon. Eric, I have a question, question for you as well. How does the brown sugar compare with Trogue's Trojanator, which is another American strong ale? The Troganator for me is more like a Doppelbach than this. So I, I, I find that just in, uh, well, can't say in just that namesake alone. I think that the Troganator is just a whole different beast, but it felt like it was more of a robust, chewy, and, and certainly kind of a beer style and flavor. And it certainly had much more of of the sensation of having a loaf of brown bread or a raisin bread. So, so that was breadier. That was breadier than the brown sugar. More bready. Yeah. Okay. Because I've had I've had I've had both. I've had both at both strong ales. They both have positive characteristics. This brown sugar almost reminds me in a lot of ways of the Bigfoot barley wine, but it's just not as big. It's a little bit bigger and it's alcohol most of the time. It just, for me, it doesn't taste as big and bold and it's a little bit thinner in the mouthfeel than that. And again, because they're only using 51.1, I guess, this year, um, IBU levels for the beer, how they got the hops in here. I think the Bigfoot barley wine is usually like 90 or well, above yeah. the topping. Right. A very 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 aggressively hopped barley wine so if you kind of want that experience but just a little bit toned down so it can be a little bit more palate pleasing to the masses brown sugar would actually be a really good substitute so uh we got people here chatting uh we got david singleton yo craft beer pour shows up hello and uh uh John and Ellie is chatting, but you're here. Hello, John. Yay. How about a Bart Robinson sighting? Any Bart Robinsons appearing? <coughs> he was what? he was he was at our last one when we were doing the one the snout. He showed up. That was pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Excellent. We got 2019 is going to be the year of the Bart. He's got to get on this channel one way or another. I, you invited him several times when he's been on to come bring his beer on a wild card Wednesday and he's go very, for it. He's very camera shy is what I get out of Bart Robinson. Otherwise, I think he's a go. He I'm trying to get Stuart Picard from, uh, I think he lives in the, in the UK somewhere. He's, he's a huge craft beer enthusiast. I'm trying to get him. Well, you 
James, you run into one problem. He has to stay up early in the morning in order to do it because you got five hours difference in the time schedule. I, that's not impossible. I mean, I would when I was in Europe, I was watching some of the reviews. So I mean, I did. Well, he says he's where he works uh, when when Eric goes on the air. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he definitely he says he's gonna watch the reruns and but he's like a real a real connoisseur. Uh, I mean his his page is just loads and loads of lovely photos of beers and ales and all that. So I understood. John, are you gonna recruit anybody else from Coweta County so we could have another associate who'd come on the channel? That would be cool. I would love to, but most of the people that I work with aren't really into that sort of thing, you know. Um, and you if can't I ever meet anybody that would be interested in doing it, absolutely. Yeah. This is great at room temperature. I think that's the way to drink it. Coitus County? Coita. Oh, Coita. I'm sorry. Smell of Coitus. And right. James, if you haven't heard, it's a completely dry county. No hard alcohol sold in Coita County. Yeah, where John lives. You, what do you go? Mean, 10 minutes in this county, right? Really? It means right. Like, yeah. a week? So what, what county is Peachtree City in? Fayette County. It's the he next to, county over. He has to just get close by to hit the hard stuff. Ten minutes, I hear. So that's cool. I mean, it would probably take me. New York State to, has no dry it. counties. Not that I'm bragging. <laughs> yeah, they, the women can also go topless in New York City, from what I hear. I Supposedly, you can go topless anywhere in the country legally. So. All right. Well, you know what? I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to stifle an uh, awesome conversation. Oh, you can like Jay. Very beer related. Yeah, I'm really beer related. We can talk about this. Giant yeah, off camera. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Post post camera. I, I think that would make for a really uh, well rounded discussion. What about crotch and belly uh, uh, reviews. Here, here we go. Hi. I don't want to talk about our. I don't want to really I'd bring this up briefly before we uh, sign off here and get people's final. <coughs> Um, I did talk to our good buddy uh, Gary Owens, actually in not in person, live on live on a video chat on Facebook, and he from 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 what everybody else told told me that I that I relayed to our buddy Gary, and what Gary told me that I relayed to you guys is the exact same story. He is very. Um, he would like to be very thorough with his with his reviews and his and his chatter. I understand that, but what we should really try to do, and I told Gary that is, is we just want a little bit more of a flow on this channel so that everything makes for a good for a good um, end product when you go back to watch the video. But but his idea is that if if we're so time concerned, then just count me out. And why can't people tell me things when things are going wrong? So in 2019, and I'm not saying see you later, Gary. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I'm trying to say is I. So, so let's just avoid that. I think we've been going strong for the last two weeks, and let's just keep going. I think we're doing a better show. I think we're getting a lot better at keeping the flow together. So let's just keep doing it that way. Yeah, but not everybody takes con constructive criticism well. Some people do. Some people yeah. don't. You know? Yeah, so that's just all we need to do. If somebody's got um, – if, if anybody that's watches live here has any constructive criticism, comments, questions, concerns, you can feel free to post it right to the bottom in the comments here to match those beer reviews or uh, Comments Metal 75, the channel. And then you can go to Masters of Beer Reviews on Facebook. Search for that group. We're like 126 plus strong. And also feel free if I am your friend on Facebook, the Eric Frontalter. That's my name. Um, yeah, message me there personally. And uh, all suggestions are actively used in your participation is excellent and needed on this channel. So thank you, everybody. That's a good time. To segue into, I think it's a good time to wrap up our uh, discussion. For Eric, I have another question. I yeah, know that yeah. for the next review next Wednesday, it's going to be Christmas style beers. Yeah, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call next week Christmas in review. Okay, how can we get our feedback into the new subjects for February, March, and April for that week when it's not wild card? In terms of the extra weeks when we do go to another 
style or a brewer or whatever we decide yeah, to do on the off week. I don't know what anybody else's thought is on that, and I don't know if anybody that's watching here has a thought on that. We're going to start 2019, the first week of the month, with an actual topic. If we, if we want to keep going and do one topic a month, on the first Wednesday of every month, that I guess would be cool just to keep it um, regulated and together. So that would be cool. Guess who has shown up? The bathroom man, Gabriel. Uh, I couldn't connect. Gabriel. Gabriel, you're connected uh, now. Do you have a beer tonight? Right. And what are you is, drinking it called, tonight? It's, is it right lager? What is it? Nope. From the jacuzzi. You want us to guess the beer you have? Because I right. like guessing games. Right. Okay, I think it's a light beer from Budweiser. Beer games. Can we see beer the games. can? Can we see the can or bottle on the camera? Just show us. Let's go. We're ready. Whoa! It's Blue Moon Belgian White. Oh, that makes sense with your comments on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabriel, I don't have now, I don't have room now in my thing to write down your review, but I'll try to. I have a photographic memory. I'll try to remember it all. Pour that, 16 ounce. Pour that thing out into a glass. Pour it out and review it. We'll, we'll, we'll save some extra time for Gabriel. I'm fine with Gabriel okay. going up. Just because I like Gabriel so much, I'm going to force him on the top. I have always room on the top here yeah. to put him in. Get a slight review out of Gabriel. Are you going to pour it or are you going to just drink it from the set? Uh, Gabriel, be brief. I only have room for maybe about five words. This is the first time drinking it in this twist off. Okay, oh, open yeah. the bottle up and pour it into a glass and let's see a Gabriel type review. I'm ready. Here we go. That's, that's an epic way to end the evening, Gabriel. I mean, there's nothing that can be better than a Gabriel review. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any tiles, no porcelain. In the garage. Oh, okay. Gabriel goes to different locations. He has different sites in his house that he does the review. I like the garage the best. He's got that really cool classic 40s car. I like the inside the house with the bathroom views the best. Yeah, I like the bathroom. Depends on, depends on your point of view. I'm going to sample that, you know, that... Uh, Eric, can you find out what the review we were doing on Gabriel's first entrance to... Um, to your view, I mean, to, I can't tell what it was, but I would like to see it again. Holy crap, we might have to go off air and I'll have to look for it then. That is a terrible question. I don't even remember when Gabe but showed you, up, but you were here, right? You were here yeah. for that review. Oh, Craig Swenson quotes Gabriel and he says, in quotes, right, Gabriel. Okay, the archives, <laughs> right? All right, Gabriel, what, what are you getting, doing? Gabriel? What's the nose like? Yeah, give us a smell of your beer. Sweet. Sweet? Okay, orange, sweet nose. Orange peel. Orange peel. Orange peel. We like wheat. Wheat oats. Yeah. Wheat, oats. And Odie. All right. Odie and the wheat oats. All right. Wheat oats. All right. Hold up a glass. Cheers, Gabriel. Let's take a sip. Enjoy, Gabriel. Let us know about the taste. That's an orange, bright color. Okay. How did we forget the color? Thank you, Gabriel. Okay. All right, look. Cloudy, now, deep now, orange. Tell me if I'm wrong. Is Blue Moon owned by Miller Coors? Okay. Is that correct? Don't be ashamed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I try to keep up with the macros, even though I'm not a fancier. <laughs> that one's a sort of a better side of macro. Better side. But it still would be considered a macro, Eric. Am I correct? I agree with that. Yeah, Shack is. Top is Einheiser Bush. Shack oh, it is that it is it is it is an Ambev product now. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. okay yeah. too. Shack Top, yep. That's their equivalency to Blue Moon. So uh taste, mouthfeel, how does it how's everything going down in the in the mouth? They want to compare this Blue Moon to Shack Top. Okay. Sounds Which one do you like better? Comparison. This one. All right. And why is that? The taste. Very important. Well, oh, this one is different. John, are you a Blue Moon fancier? 
it's okay. I mean, it's a great beer for the style, but it's I'm kind of I don't know. It's it's not something I would gravitate towards. I always found it to be a little bit on the light side was my main yeah. criticism. I like the Belgian styles better and more. No, Shack yeah. Top is light than this. Like okay. Beer. Yeah, I guess I would agree with that. Okay. Jack Top is less cloudy and less orange. Okay. I think it's super orange. Okay, I, I like that assessment. All right. So, what? Where would you? Where would you put a, a a number rating on Blue Moon right now? This Blue Moon has more of a wheat taste than Shack Top. That's good. So. So if you were in school, how would you rate this this beer if it were a uh, right school one on one. Uh, how about from one to ten? How would you rate it? I rate it. Let's see. Eight. Okay, so we're, we give it an eighty, which would be like a B minus kind of rating. Right. Oh, all right. Okay, I'm right. I'm marking it in my book. Eighty out of one hundred. Eight out of ten. A B minus. Somewhere from eighty to eighty-eight. That's, 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 right a, that's a wide range. Try to pick it, pick your spot. Okay, eighty-five. There okay. we go. So it's a B like plus. That. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, Craig Swenson quotes you, Gabe. He says, "Wheat, oats, right color, Gabe." I love it, Craig. You're the man. All right, so cool. All right, thank you for stopping really? by. That is actually a really good examination. Yes, I want to stop by for the last Wednesday of 2018. Boom, baby, and that is how I like to hear that. Thank That's you, true. sir. That's Thank true. you for uh, – uh, too bad Jay wasn't here. I know that uh, he saw some of the review, and David was with him on that. So thank you, Jay and David um, and Craig and Craft Beer Pours. And yeah. I think that was it from the chat and John and Neway. So thank you to John and Neway, and thank you to Gabriel Salaya. Thank you to – I saw this twist, uh, twist cap, and I, and I got it. <coughs> Cool. And thank you to Michael Komarov. Thank you to James P. Madonna being a newcomer to the craft beer scene in 2018 here on YouTube. And hopefully 2019 is going to be a really good, fun, interesting year. Hopefully everybody wants to stick around that wants to. And we keep doing all this crazy crap. So um, right. anybody have any final comments for the evening before we go off air? Anybody? How about a little bosun's whistle, Mr. New Englander? Go for it. All right. Hit that whistle. We're going to go off air. And that's the last. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Say, Until uh, next time, on behalf of Gabriel, John. Happy Michael, New Happy New Year's. Year's. Yeah, happy New Year, everybody. 2019, here we come. That's right. Thank last wild card Wednesday. Cheers. We'll see you soon. January 31st. Ah, the last one. Cheers. Cheers. He looks like he got a, a dog whistle. <laughs>